On November 8, 2013, Typhoon Haiyan made landfall in the central of Philippines. With the wind approaching at the speed of 310 km per hour or 195 miles per hour in storm-prone areas across 20 provinces, millions has been forced to seek shelter. Tacloban, a city of more than 220,000 people, were heavily affected with 6,000 people now confirmed have died in the disaster. Damage was particularly severe in the Leyte province city of Tacloban. Many people's homes have been destroyed and people are desperate for food and shelter. And uh, some portion of the road were still um, in uncle deep water and there were bodies, you know, at the side. The recovery is quite rapid. Uh, I, I, lost, I lost one employee, um, a lawyer, um, and I saw his body um, by the roadside together with his pregnant wife and kids. Uh, there was one kid who survived, a three-year-old kid survived. Forced evacuation should uh, be implemented. Um, and um, houses should be built in safe areas. I think that would be the best solution. The local government was uh, reminding everybody to vacate. But um, we did not expect that to be that strong. So even our my employee, my, my employees were calling their family and the, their parents were saying, ah, we know about the storm, but we we have experienced so many storms in the past. It's it's gonna pa just pass by and it's not. We get the household members and check their conditions. And then uh, first give them the prophylaxis for leptospirosis so we can dock this in. So we can find uh, on the day of the typhoon, practically in the region to take over the operation. The same way with Region 7. So other regions of the Department of Health took over, but most of the services were focused on the hospital care. And it was good that like the Department of Health the arm, the autonomous region for Muslim Mindanao, came to Lake and also took over the public health side. So they didn't go to the hospital, but they went into public health. So on the 10th uh, day, of course, you need also not just to work on health, you need to have food, other things you can have And well, so. So now, our problem is not just accessibility, communication, it's more for night time, but we have already some communication, although it's difficult. The cell phones can now be utilized. So what I'm trying to say is at least we already have the rescue operation. Uh, uh, the education system is now start, has started. And repair the kids out. Yeah, the referral from the municipalities to the nearby uh, hospital. Debris and continuing bad weather are hampering efforts to distribute aid. The typhoon was followed by a storm surge, which is reported to have reached up to 5 meters and flattened homes, schools and badly damaged the airport of the province. According to National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, NDRRMC, 16 million people affected by Typhoon Haiyan, 4.1 million people displaced by Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines, 1.1 million houses damaged or destroyed by Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. The United Nations University International Institute for Global Health or UNUIIGH was established in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia in 2007. Its director, Professor Dr. Anthony, talks about the role of UNUIIGH in addressing global health issues, including the impacts of climate change and urbanization on human health. UN University was established in the 1970s to improve knowledge and capacity for decision-making about global issues 
by UN organisations and member states. Our institute, UNUIGH, focuses on global health issues and we're based in Kuala Lumpur. We conduct research, provide training and lead thinking on global health issues with a particular emphasis on the needs of low and middle income countries. We run short courses and we have PhD students. We take an eco-social perspective on human health, complementing the biomedical perspective taken by others. Our programs include environment and health, governance for global health and universal health coverage. Human health is entirely dependent on healthy planetary systems, for clean water, safe food and other resources for health. Climate change is already affecting human health around the world. Impacts include death and disease from flooding, heat waves and other extreme weather events. Direct impacts include changes to the frequency and distribution of mosquito-borne diseases like malaria and dengue fever. However, the greatest health impacts are likely to come from flow-on consequences of social, economic and demographic disruption. Currently, we're in the midst of a global urban transition. Urbanisation can have positive and negative impacts on health. Cities can be great places to live. We're attracted to cities for work, education and social opportunity. However, living in cities can also be unhealthy. Examples include air pollution and motor vehicle injuries. Sedentary ways of living in cities are also bad for health. There's a pressing need to rethink current patterns of urban development to enable active, healthy and sustainable ways of living. There's an urgent need to rethink current patterns of urban development to enable active, healthy and sustainable ways of living. Greenhouse is a term used in conjunction with the phenomenon known as greenhouse effect. This phenomenon occurred when certain gases in the atmosphere trap the solar energy. That energy will later drive the Earth's weather and climate. National Climate Data Center has updated National on Global Climate for November 2013. The globe as a whole set a new record for warmth. It was the 37th November in a row that was warmer than average. Most scientists believed that the warming of the climate will lead to more extreme weather events. Global warming is an increase in average global temperatures. This phenomenon is indicated by seven indicators. Air temperature over the land, sea surface temperature, air temperature over oceans, sea level, ocean heat, humidity, tropospheric temperature in the layer closest to the Earth's surface. Professor Dr. Jamal Hisham, a professor of environmental health and research fellow at UNUIIGH, explains the complex linkages between climate change and human health outcomes. This diagram shows the complex interaction which link global climate change to human health effect. First, we need to understand that there are two forces at work. One is the accumulation of greenhouse gases which lead to positive radiative forcing and subsequently global warming. The other opposing force is the accumulation of aerosol pollutant in the environment which leads to negative radiative forcing resulting in global cooling. However, the overall impact would be global warming because of the over overwhelming influence of positive radiative forcing. Global warming will first have an impact on the environment by modifying it as depicted by the purple colored boxes which then lead to environmental impact as shown by the brown colored boxes which then affect human health as shown by the yellow colored boxes. As an example, we have a global warming causing the melting of polar ice which lead to increase in sea level and coastal flooding of low-lying coastal area which resulted in population displacement 
which is often associated with the health effect related to anxiety and stress among the displaced population. Another example would be global warming causing increase in surface uh, temperature which then causes ocean warming and altered wind pattern. Altered wind pattern may result in either decrease or increase in precipitation. In the case of increased precipitation, this may lead to increased uh, propagation of vector population like insects, example mosquito, which then uh, may lead to increase in vector-borne diseases like malaria and dengue fever. Therefore, we see that global climate change can have an indirect impact on human health by first modifying the environment which then leads to environmental impact and subsequently health outcome. Drought is one of the leading impediments to development in Africa. More than 13 million people are still in urgent need of food and assistance after the worst drought hit East Africa in 60 years. Much of the continent is dependent on rain-fed agriculture, which makes it particularly susceptible to climate variability. The failure of both the 2010 fall rains and the 2011 spring rains caused a powerful drought gripped East Africa. Stacked in an unstable political climate, already caused a famine that led to hundreds of thousands of deaths. In this case, the failure of the East African rains was affected by climate change. Climate change and population pressures make the prospect for continued drought impacts and water scarcity more worrisome. Alleviating the impacts of drought across sub-Saharan Africa requires a transition from crisis management to risk management and reduction, including developing national drought policies, increasing coping capacity, and adapting to likely future changes at local levels. Snow has blanketed much of the Middle East. This includes Egypt, Syria, Palestine. After about 112 years, on Friday, December 13th, Egypt's capital was covered with snow turning the desert land into a beach of white snow. Precipitation of any kind is rare in Egypt, so the rare sight of snow has been much talked about. Two of the country's Mediterranean ports and two ports on the Red Sea were affected as several inches of snow fell in the Sinai Desert and elsewhere. In Syria, at the northern city of Aleppo, temperature on the deserted streets hovered around zero. A massive snowstorm in Alexa, or Syria, has killed 12 children due to severe cold weather, as reported by Syrian Human Rights Network. It also hit some parts in the northern Syria and Lebanon. Temperatures at these parts reached below zero in the mountainous areas, dumping snow and heavy rains. Meanwhile, in Palestine, the land was whitened by 20 inches of snow. It is reported that this is the city's heaviest snowstorm for 50 years. In Malaysia, the northeast monsoon season usually occurs from October and lasts till March the following year. Recent flood event hit several states in Malaysia from October until middle of December 2013. In Pahang, non-stop rain lasting over four days left this state almost paralyzed. More than 30,000 refugees seek shelter at 116 evacuation centers, Pahang. It was estimated that the damage to 42 schools in six districts in Pahang has cost more than 7 million ringgit. Meanwhile, in Trangganu, torrential flood has battered the worst district at Kemaman, where the number of victims at relief center reached 19,869 from 4,901 families. Highest rainfall recorded is almost half of the average annual rainfall recorded for the entire state, namely between 3,000 to 3,500 millimeters. 
more than 68 hectare of paddy fields in Subrang Parai, Utara, Kedah, which had just been sown with seedlings, were submerged after floods hit the district. Seedlings would be destroyed if the fields were inundated for too long. The flood situation in the Manjung district worsened with nearly 1,000 victims evacuated to four relief centres. The polar vortex has resulted in severe winter over the Northern Hemisphere, especially in the United States of America, early January 2014. It is a fast-flowing stream of air that circles the North Pole during the winter months in the upper atmosphere, known as the stratosphere. The stratospheric polar vortex is a large-scale region of air that is contained by a strong west-to-east jet stream that circles the polar region. This polar vortex extends from the tropopause, the dividing line between the stratosphere and troposphere, through the stratosphere and into the mesosphere above 50 kilometers. It is widely accepted that Climate change will have an impact on the spread of infectious diseases and communicable diseases, which is likely to bring about new public health risks. The transmission patterns of communicable diseases are influenced by many factors, including climatic and ecological elements. Foodborne and waterborne diseases, for instance, are associated with high temperatures. Disease transmitting vectors example, mosquitoes, sand flies and ticks are highly sensitive to climate conditions, including temperature and humidity. Their geographical distribution will widen as climate conditions change, potentially allowing them to spread into regions where they are not currently able to live. Communicable diseases, for which the most common mode of transmission is the fecal oral route, through consumption of contaminated food and water. Communicable diseases. Chikugunya, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Critisporidium, Dengue and Dengue hemorrhagic fever or DHF. Giardiasis, Leishmaniasis, Leptospirosis, Lyme borreliosis, Lyme disease, malaria, rickettsiosis, murine typhus or rickettsiosis morina, salmonellosis, West Nile fever.